All right, one of the brand new features of Betaflight 4.3 is the introduction of P-Boost for anti-gravity. So in addition to boosting the I term, it's also boosting the P term. So it's supposed to help a lot with nose throttle bobble, or throbbles as they say. Uh, in the PR, it definitely does show an improvement for the quad it was tested with, and you know other people have tested it as well. This quad specifically has some nose throttle bobble on it. So let's, right now this has Betaflight 4.2 on it. Let's check that out and then we'll splash over Betaflight 4.3. Check it out, look at the bobble, see if it improves, and then also check out the black box traces and then debug and kind of get into the little weeds on that. All right, so before we get into the video clips, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna do the trace overlay thing, and I wanted to show you what some of those traces are because obviously you wouldn't know what the hell you're looking at. So I'm gonna do a trace overlay thing that looks just like this. And up at the top here, you're gonna see this orange line. That's the throttle. So as I'm pumping the throttle, you'll be able to see that go up and down. And you'll have a couple things you'll be able to see there. You're gonna see the throttle on the sticks of here, of course. And then you're also gonna see the throttle with the back box overlay. And then also that's gonna line up about center screen to seeing this as the actual throttle trace. Underneath that, you'll see the red and then this cyan line. Those are both pit error and on the roll for red, and the cyan is the pitch axis. And as you see the nose bobbling, you should see that PID error spike. So PID error is the difference between what you're commanding it to do versus what it's actually doing. So bottom line with PID error, we always want it to be in the ideal situation for it to be zero. If PID error is zero, that means the quad is absolutely exactly following your sticks at all times. In reality, that's not what occurs. So when you see this pit error going up, that means the quad is moving off track of where the sticks are. So if I'm holding the sticks centered and steady, and then you see the pit error move off, that means that the quad is actually rolling off or, or pitching to the left or right or forward or back, but the stick is not actually moving. Down here on the first one for Betaflight 4.2, this is gonna be the anti-gravity boost. So when you see this line boosting way up, that is anti-gravity kicking in. So looking at the log of this exact same section, you will see that anti-gravity down here, this is the debug trace for it, is down you know, near zero. And then as we either accelerate into the throttle or decelerate, so anti-gravity kicks in whenever you are rapidly moving the throttle up or rapidly moving the throttle down. You can actually go into Betaflight and under the OSD, there's this anti-gravity element. If you turn that on, that gives you this little AG and you can place it somewhere on the screen. I'm not exactly sure it works with DJI. It probably doesn't actually, but what will that will do on an analog system at least is when anti-gravity is activating, this little AG will flash up. Now for the Betaflight 4.3 run, again, you'll see mostly the same throttle on top, roll, pitch, pit error on top as well. But down here under the anti-gravity debug traces, you are gonna see it's a little bit more complicated because not only do you have the I-term boosting, which that's what classic anti-gravity is, it's boosting the I-term. It also in 4.3 is gonna boost the P-term as well. So let's look at black box log on that. So looking at the log data specifically, you've got just a little bit more lines down below. The red here is the classic anti-gravity I-term boosting. And then we have a new just if the coding was changed a little bit for how it's boosting the I term, uh, and that's debug trace one, so that's the, the cyan. And then the big thing that's different is that you have this yellow and kind of purplish cyanish color down here. That is the P gain boost on the roll and the pitch axis. Now you're gonna see those line work are right behind each other, so they're not at any point that I've seen differentiated, so you're not gonna see the yellow line, because again, it's boosting the P gain on the roll and the pitch axis both at the exact same time. Enough about all the little details. If you do have questions, please drop them down below. Let's run the flights and see what you think. DJI action on this one. It's been a little bit since I've flown this quad. I figured I'd give you guys some different scenery instead of constantly looking at the field for these kind of things. So this is, again, whoa. You can see it kind of bobbles off to the, to the right-hand side. It's actually not too bad. 
without the um, GoPro on it. So, where the heck am I? Oh, I'm way over there. All these houses look the same. Yeah, you can see it's not too bad. Let's just, uh, now I have anti-gravity set to five, and I do have this tuned as well. All right, so that's what we got on here. So let's uh, bring this in, you know, charge it up, and uh, then we'll check it out with the Check it out with 4.3 on it. Four point three on it now. Looks like it's okay. And uh see what we get. So, I don't know. A little bit more stable. It wasn't that bad beginning. I'm looking for that slight roll to the right. If anything. I think it's a little bit more stable. So uh, you can be the judge too. We're gonna uh, have. I'm gonna think I'm gonna overlay the logs on it as well. Man, I'll tell you, DJI is just the best. Looks pretty good. Um, I think it's slightly better. So it's same tune, same everything. I really just flashed it. And then that looks real good. There's a little bit of uh, something on the full throttle trap, but how many times are you doing that? Um, so again, yeah, that's it. So I think I'm just going to I guess the pack is pretty well used already. Bring it in before I crash it. Hit the damn snow. So let's go back, take a look at the logs. Gonna go from there. So what did you think? Was Betaflight 4.3 a little bit better? Let's dive into the logs and see what they show, just a little bit more detail. So just scrubbing through this section, you know, we're gonna look at, you know, here we see a big jump in pit error, here we see a big jump in pit error, here, here, here is another one. So there's some fairly significant jumps in pit error, and, and honestly, you can see it's mostly on the roll axis for this specific thing, not just the pitch axis. Now here, this is when I'm actually doing that sharp move to roll to the right or to the left at, at the apex of the uh, of the flight there. So let's look at another section. Obviously it's a different flight, but let's see if we see that same thing. And you can see the pit error right through here and kind of just come right through there. And you can see, yeah, there's some, but it's not nearly as high as we were seeing in 4.2. Of course, it's not the exact same move, but that's why I was running the flights and you can see uh, you know, it's just similarities. And again, here is a big one where we're doing that twitch move at the very top, the apex of the flight to kind of invert and come back down. So definitely just like in the PR, we're showing some improvement there in the logs. I see an improvement in the HD footage. And like Joshua Barbell once said, like stop feeling things and know things. 
And that's what we're here for. So anyways, I hope you found this information helpful. As always, big thanks to Chris Thompson, CTZ Snooze, for the addition of this new feature to Betaflight 4.3. If you did like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and check out the Patreon. Thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped. And, like, smash that like button. Because <laughs> then, I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So, do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?